How's it going, folks? Stu here. The London Film Festival train keeps on rolling, and listen, the bangers, they're really banging this year. We were off to a little bit of a slow start in terms of films that were really wowing me, but my god, it's just sort of the, the floodgates have unleashed themselves. And today's film is one which I wasn't really expecting to love as much as I did. It's a surprise banger, I think. I'd only really seen an image from it in the program this year, and I thought, sounds good, it's in official competition, I'll check it out. And I came out of it just in awe. That one is Godland, and I have got some thoughts. Godland is the latest film from Icelandic filmmaker Hlina Palmason, uh, written as well by him, which is always fun. And it is the story of a Danish priest in the 19th century who ends up doing a big old trek over to a remote part of Iceland to build a church and photograph its people. Straight out the bat, this is the best looking film I've seen this year. Bar none. This is one of the most finely tuned pieces of slow burn cinema I've seen for quite some time, at least since last year's Memoria, which as you'll know, I adored. I loved that film and I'm a very big fan of films which aren't afraid to take a long, slow time to do and show what they need to do and show. There's a very weird sort of spectrum of slow burn cinema in my eyes, which is often quite hard to articulate, but it's like, I don't know. Films can get quite slow, and the longer and slower they get, often the more challenging and difficult they can be as films. I say can, because obviously there are exceptions to, like, being slow doesn't make a film innately bad, right? But more often than not, there's almost like a threshold, right? Where if a film just keeps going and just becomes increasingly slow and long very deliberately, I can't help but be stupidly transfixed by the thing. That is what happened with Weirsitical's Memoria, which is an incredibly long, incredibly slow burn, deeply reflective piece in which not much really happens. You're just asked to kind of spend time with the frame, right? Godland takes a similar page from the same book, really, there, in that it is a two and a half hour long, very meditative, very contemplative piece of cinema. And I love the way that Palmerson as a director just invites us as viewers to kind of sit with things, to just observe, which sounds like an incredibly banal thing to say about cinema, because obviously we're always observing film. It is literally the act of watching something. But not all directors, not all filmmakers quite understand the act of just sitting with something and observing it. And a lot of people are afraid to let things play out for too long. And naturally that makes sense, you know, not all films demand that and I'm not saying that every film needs to be extremely long takes, extremely slow takes with not much happening in them. But it is just incredibly captivating and refreshing when you see a filmmaker that gets that you can do that and also knows how to do that. And part of it comes down again to the stunning cinematography here, which just photographs the landscape of Iceland so stunningly that it's never dull, but also really captures the movement and the presence of humans within nature, which is obviously a big part of this film's overall themes, which has a lot to do with colonialism to some degree, of going to a place that isn't your own, and of the conflicts that arise from that. But I love the way that this film frames it all within the nature of Iceland. And it's almost like the film establishes through its visuals and through its incredibly contemplative and meditative pacing, a really clear hierarchy between humankind and civilization and nature. Using that incredibly stunning, but also unforgiving and harsh Icelandic countryside, the nature here, to suggest it seems to us about going into places that aren't ours. And I suppose to some extent about the futility of man's sort of spirituality in the way that we know it. And I genuinely don't think there is a better compliment for a filmmaker out there than having convinced me that there was no other way to watch this film. That despite its borderline monotonous feel and its deliberately paced design, even if we might not always know exactly what it's saying or doing or what we're supposed to be picking up from what we're watching, it is doing something, even if it's in the background. And we just have to trust that the film and the filmmaker is able to bring us back into the mix and bring us around to things. That does mean that I don't think this film is going to be for everyone. I'm not sure I can confidently recommend it to everyone. But you'll know quite quickly whether or not it's going to be for you or not. But again, I think it just comes down to a change of perspective of adjusting to watching a film which is just asking you to savor it for a little bit. I can imagine you're probably sat here going, Stu, this doesn't sound particularly exciting. <laughs> but the beauty of just sort of 
showing things and letting things absorb for themselves is that you end up sort of mining out these more natural moments of humor of romance i want to say of sadness of hurt and pain and just life right which sounds very pretentious i know that as i'm saying it it's sounding incredibly pretentious but i don't know how else to articulate that there is a real sense that this film is able to capture a lot of what life is which is just things happening and sometimes amounting to things <laughs> i just loved it it is the exact kind of slow cinema that i really really appreciate and that i find immensely absorbing and it just was amazing in the cinema it looked stunning it sounded amazing a really stunning piece overall one which has definitely got me wanting to go back and watch palmerson's previous works but what about you guys have you caught godland did you see it at the film festival have you seen it elsewhere let me know what you thought about it down there i'd love to know your thoughts on the incredibly deliberate slow meditative cinema that this film puts in front of us whether you loved it whether you didn't let me know down there we'll have a little chat and of course if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit go ahead and click subscribe buttons down there it means you won't miss any of the future videos i've got dropping from the film festival spoiler alert many more to come socials are down there in the description as well as well as my letterbox so go down there follow me wherever you want to follow me unless it's in real life uh, don't follow me in real life i'll see you guys soon for some more thoughts on more films but until next time I need to learn how to operate a camera in the same way this film operated a camera, right? It cannot be fair that people are able to make films that look this good.